Okay, tractor time recording. Meeting number two, what we're doing is uh, in the tractor construction set meetings is going through the overall design. We can probably convert this into a tractor 101 design course if we just refactor that to all the juicy tidbits of essential information. But the idea is to go through all the different systems of what we've learned over the last last eight years or so on the tractor so that we can design them effectively in FreeCAD. So last time we covered the universal rotor and we went on to, to the basic design of what the different modules of a tractor is like a, like a frame, wheel drive, power unit, cab, hydraulics, loader, just main basic design. We talked a little bit about, about possible configurations. We talked a lot or talked some about doing both wheel and track drive off the same platform. We talked about an articulated versus a tracked version. And a tracked is very attractive simply because if you're talking about real conditions, real working conditions uh, on the ground, traction is very important. Like, for example, if, if it's any wet, a tractor will pretty much quickly get stuck, whereas the the actual force of a track on the ground per area is actually smaller so actually tracks do not damage the ground as much as wheels believe it or not because wheels have a point contact whereas tracks have the weight of the entire tractor spread over the entire track so it turns out that the force per area on a track is actually significantly less than wheels so you can say that a track is less damaging to to the field that you're working or whatever you're doing though it might not seem like that but it is true so let's go let's continue to so tractor 4 we left off with steering of a large tractor we talked about the configuration where we've got either two tracks like a small small very small tractor uh, let's see am I sharing my let me let me share my my screen so you guys are on the same page so we talked about present to everyone we talked about a configuration from a very small one with two track units to larger ones with four track units minimum is two track units because you have to steer you have to turn back and forth so let's continue tractor 5 so duplicate the slide Tractor 5, let's talk about um, first of all list, list the modules that we have discussed before because it boils down to like the level of completion of a project is basically have we catted up all the modules that we, we uh, have talked about are they actual technical design so let's let's start by listing the specifically the parts that we need for a tractor because at the end of the day it's about getting the CAD for a construction set so parts needed so we talked about like when we talk about for the library you know we're creating a library of parts parts and modules and final assemblies so first we talked about the the hydraulic motor itself hydraulic wheel motor that's a separate file we talked about the universal uh, wheel unit assembly which we talked about last time which was if we go to slide two of the tractor construction set document we have the modular wheel unit uh, that's the link for what we're talking about here so I'll just put a link to that next so the modular wheel unit is the atta attaches there's an attachment um, the modular wheel unit has a built-in attachment um, so we can say modular wheel unit already has a built-in attachment but if we just use a motor by itself then we need to attach it to the frame so so motor only attachment because we talked about two configurations, one where, where you have the entire modular wheel unit, 
with built-in bearings and shaft and mounting versus just the motor that has no attachment so you have to attach it to the frame okay so there's that uh, there's obviously the frame uh, like the base platform we talked about that there's a cab which is a structural thing that protects the, the driver and let's talk about the drive uh, today let's cover the the track track detail so track detail so the track consists of several parts one is you have the actual track pads the actual tracks tracks proper the track pads two you have an idler uh, which is those wheels that the tracks are just right on they don't drive there's the drive sprocket there's a tensioner and then of course you would have mounting to wheels you know mounting to the frame um, but track detail let's let's go through some of this because all these things are critical like the tensioner how do you do that the drive sprocket is obviously the most important that's how you're driving you're taking the power from the motor into the tracks themselves the idler is what the tracks actually roll typically if you see tracks all those small wheels on the bottom they're the idlers meaning where the tracks just s smoothly ride on them so the tracks don't fall off your drive assembly and track pads are the actual um, the actual you know two inch by maybe 12 inch pieces or like in slide number four the track pads are just to label that explicitly track pads are the multiple units of which we need many so track pads um, and then actually I'm actually gonna bring to the table the idea of rubber printed tracks so while those are the tracks themselves they're metal right there uh, we can actually talk about 3d printed rubber tracks so so those are the track pads um, so actually let's without getting too distracted and I'll cover that I'll mentally mention that briefly because this is serious we actually want to do this with a larger 3D printed printer and that is the 3D printed uh, tracks so a monolithic so one track one piece as opposed to like 50 pieces for the individual track pads okay so let's talk about in priority order what this is like here so priority order you start with the drive sprocket you go to the actual track pads which the drive sprocket drives uh, you have to have the idler tensioner mounting to the frame 3d printed track yeah that's the way we want to go so so tractor slide 5 let's go to the next slide so this is tracks drive sprocket for the drive sprocket we have a bunch of information about how that works already in a last year's document so if we go to tractor genealogy we've got all the work all the prior work on so there was bulldozer development I'm clicking on that and like the design we had here uh, let's actually copy and paste that so I'm gonna copy this copy this image and paste it into the document Try that again. Copy image. Paste the image. So the track pads. So 
So all those little units there. Well, let's talk about the sprocket first. So the sprocket is let's uh, first first item just covering like how the track is driven is sprocket, the drive sprocket. And let's go to a working document here. So so actually that sprocket what we have done last year is you see that 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 clamp there the sprocket was actually clamped on to the universal rotor it was not bolt like wasn't keyed in like there's actually a bolt-on connection so it's a quick disconnect sprocket now that worked so let's look at the details of that so basically what we did is is bolt clamp it with this large clamp here uh, the sprocket to the shaft so it's a very easy on and off modular mechanism you can think of it as you take that off and you can put instead of this drive sprocket you can put on a wheel so you have quick disconnect or quick interchangeability of what of how you're driving this this tractor thing so so to show more details about that there should be a working document So under modules, we can go into this this one document here, um, which is on a bulldozer page. But in this, let's let's actually go to this this working document. Um, so I'm going to open that up. Before Google Hangouts had where you clicked on uh, the Google Hangout, it gets you to get you to edit mode but now it's switched so you you have to put an explicit link for the edit link so that's what I just did here and I'm gonna since my computer is a little slow here I'm gonna trash the Jitsi meet since we're, since uh, we're good to go here on this this meeting um, so if we go to edit of the tractor document, let's let's see what's in there, because because the whole system of the drive sprocket was documented there. Um, so let's go into that that one document. Let me just share that with everyone so you can follow where I'm at. And it's taking forever to load here. Okay. Um, this whole document talked about all the different. Yeah, it's taking time to load. That's a long document, actually. It's got like 30 pages. Um, but in it, I discussed a lot of the different modularity concepts of what we were trying before, and and it's largely proven. You know, crazy stuff like this. You know, they they put two bulldozers together. They're actually stacking them. Either what I was talking about last time. You can stack them can stack them various ways you can stack them side to side you can train them put a train of them together things like that but let's see what's what's important in this document um, what I wanted to get to was the actual drive sprocket so the only information we have about that um, yes yeah, so I talk about hydraulics everything goes in there so this is this is uh, some concepts of how you can scale them. Like if you have a ba very basic unit, how you can start stacking them up into bigger machines. On this page here. Okay, but the sprocket, yeah, check this out right here. That's a, some of the sprocket detail, universal rotor. So what I'm doing there, uh, you see the purple. That's the actual drive sprocket, and it's clamped on to the shaft. 
So this is what we have. This is what we did before. And the idea there is we got to cat it up. So this is basically three inch. Um, yeah, this is exactly what we did. This is three inch fat tubing, like half inch wall. There's your shaft, which is three inch shaft. You got your sprocket in the middle. And this this is very strong. It's got 4,000 pounds of torque from just this, this thing. The point is it works. Like nobody really does it that way, but it works. Um, for us, it's the modularity idea. You can take this on, on and off quickly. Okay, so I'm going to go back to this. So the sprocket, the detail is already in last year's, that was two years ago, document. But we need to cat it up. So that's the sprocket, the, the driving, the drive of the tracks, okay? Uh, so let me just kind of... Any questions on that? We can talk about work workflow allocation later, but let's just talk about... Uh, explaining this to, to everybody. So there's the sprocket. So that now let's move on to the actual track pads because that's what you're driving. The track is essentially a chain. It's a chain that that sprocket drives. So think about it as a chain like a bicycle chain. So let's see what documentation we have from that <clears throat> from previous years. So I talk more about the universal rotor here. Um, I'm going to put a link to that working doc. Um, well, that that working doc is already linked there. So talking more about how that's done. So, so you can read all about this universal rotor thing. Okay, there's concepts of a blade controls overview rotation stuff I don't have much more work on the track in this document so but this document does link to the actual other document which I believe is right here the bulldozer design link on page number one of the bulldozer modules working document. What we're concerned about, and I can start drawing this up right now, the track pads. So let me actually go to the next slide and go to track pads and start drawing them out conceptually what has to happen there as this the other document loads up. Because I do have the track design right there and I'll I'll get right into that as soon as this document loads up. Uh, give it a few seconds, or let's see. Yeah, give it a couple of seconds here. So, but for the tracks, the track pads, I'm going to put a link. That's a link to the second document on the track pads. Okay. Uh, so this slide I'm going to duplicate it so so tracks track pad so the track pads there are all these ones here so concept well let's go to the other document um, okay, so this is kind of what we're seeing here. It's these tracks. Let's think of it as a chain, etc. Okay, so here's the actual drive. Well, that's the drive sprockets. Actually, 3D printed them to test them out, how they work. They work well. It's actually an open SCAD file. There's a sprocket generator on. Uh, if you do open SCAD, which is the open source parametric software. You can actually generate these sprockets, and we've done that, so that's easy. Here's more detail. Detail. 
So let's talk about the industry standards of tracks. They're a pad, they're, they've got, uh, they're like a chain. So when you talk about bulldozer, the chain that you have is, is this fat chain that the track pads attach to, like you can see all those chain links over there. So track design rationale. You can see the diagram of sprockets versus idlers. But that's how they look. Um, so the tracks are, the pads are driven by the sprocket through a hole in the track itself. So that's what actually, well, not a hole, it's, no, let's go next, next slide actually. Next slide. Um, to explain how they work. It's not the, the hole just allows the sprocket to, to go through if it, that sprocket is too, too tall. But anyway, the, what drives uh, the track is the fact that the sprocket is pushing against these pins here. So that's what's actually happening. Tracks are pushing against those pins, and that's that's how they drive it, like a, like a bicycle chain. Once again, think about it that way. So this is what the design was like last year. So we had, uh, let's see if I have any better diagrams here. No, that's all we've got for the tracks. Um, so what we what we'll make is something that, as far as the actual build here, what we do. Uh, let's copy these two two things into the new work document and expand on that because we did the first prototype last year and what we ended up with is, is with a design that's similar to to this this track detail you got the drive cog and the actual track pad and so forth um, this is this is how it ended up looking um, so you can kind of try to picture that and reconcile that against this document here so you've got the pads You've got this chain-like element and so forth so but that's th this is what the individual piece kind of looks like it's similar that's not ours it's similar but each of these pieces one fits into the next like they they all go into each other and they all together make a chain with a pin through through this and what we want to do this time around is improve on that uh, improve on what we have done so the conceptual design for us for this year will be if we break it down into parts is you've got the track pad which is you know your piece of metal um, and then what from there so from there we can do this this um, and this is what we want to cat up in detail so you've got these two pieces like those pieces of metal that are now in this picture standing up vertically and the pin the actual bolt through we can use a simple regular bolt so if you think about a simple regular bolt let me expand that view so I can actually draw it um, yeah so this this pad here actually draw the bolt going through it it would look like that there's actually a bolt which pins one piece of track to the next one okay so that's that bolt that pins things through it's essentially that now there's a little detail here in that um, it has to narrow down at the end here so in order to go into the next track it has to be like that you weld another piece here and that's essentially what this this concept here, this this picture you see is like. I don't have a picture of our thing here, but essentially that. So a, a pin goes through this wider part, and then there's the more narrow part, which goes inside the wider part. So you can think of it. So if we duplicate this slide. Um, track connection so you've got one track piece and then you just have a bunch of them next to each other they yeah the details here are this thing is not sticking out that much it's it's, it's like going to there this really has to end there 
So think about it, just a bunch of these pads together uh, so they're put, put right next to each other. And that's how you make a track. It's a lot of work, that's where you need CNC cutting. But that's what you do. And then to get more traction you can weld, like here you see just flat track pieces, you can weld a bar across that, maybe like a half inch or one inch. We actually did two inch uh, vertical pieces. That was a rough ride. It really grips into the ground but it's very very rough. So I would recommend maybe like a half inch, possibly even a one inch uh, vertical reinforcement like what you see on a bulldozer tracks, they have this vertical part coming up so you get better traction. But that thing is not too big, It's maybe here it's like one inch or something for these big bulldozer tracks. Okay, so that's the tracks ideas. Um, this needs to be catted up and then we move on to, there's the idlers. The idlers we have, <clears throat> once again the design is pretty complete on that. Uh, if we go to the, let's see, the bulldozer document, the sprockets, the idlers, they're drawn out here, the idler wheels. That's all we did. We had a piece of 8 inch tube and we put the bearings on them, shaft collars and a shaft. Those were our idlers and I think we can do this identically as we see here because that works well. And there, uh, you can say there the idler front view there, it's 8 inch diameter for the inner wheel and then it ends up being like the effective radius of that ends up being 12 the way the tracks sit on, sit, sit on it. But that's the idler. It's just freely spinning thing that rides that the, the tracks ride upon. So uh, for that I will do so idler we can repeat that. So that works. So that's the idler. Uh, next part is pretty much it. Track, what, what else are we missing here? We, we had more pieces. Drive sprocket, track pads, idler, tensioner, mounting to the frame, 3D printed track. So tensioner and mounting to the frame is the next things. Uh, if we talk about mounting to the frame, um, I can point to here. Mounting is this mounting plate right there that uh, basically there's two of those plates and the idler goes into two of those plates like uh, let's see if we can see it in this picture here um, right if you zoom in let's zoom in on this detail here because that's the idler right there this thing right here is the idler so what you see for the idler is there's this one plate here and actually there was another plate here. Um, I don't know why I'm not seeing that, but it's it's there. Uh, because this idler has to be supported. When you have a shaft, you have to su support it on two points. Otherwise, it would just wobble. So you got two of these vertical plates here supporting the idler. Um, go in here. This one plate here, and then the second plate should be right there, and it's might be cut off there for some reason um, but that's that's how it looks to mount mount the tracks mount the idler so that's part one of the mounting the other part of the mounting is of course the fact that um, when you mount the tracks they're mounted on t two idler sets and those are the plates to the frame and then there's the the rotor which was another mounting point so that track is supported on three points it's firmly connected to the frame so that's the mounting system but you gotta remember about all those plates um, so you can say mounting plates uh, two for the two sets for idlers and one set and then the the drive rotor that's already connected Okay, now the critical part here is, is tensioning. How are you going to tension that? And this is where we're going to do an improvement. And, and the way we did tensioning last year was you see these plates here. They actually have a, an elongated slitted hole. So what we did is we, we put tensioners, and you can see the tension is very clearly in here. The tensioner, and let me zoom into that. What we did was have 
Um, yeah, this is not sh clear how this l works here, but the tensioner was basically we were we actually welded pulling bolts onto these shafts. So what we did was basically pull the the idler sets back. Oh yeah. Uh, okay, here it is. The way th that we have the idlers mounted in this case of the micro truck is a shaft that goes all the way through from one side to the other. So sorry, there's this one plate here. The other plate is actually on the far side because this shaft goes all the way through. You can do it also that, yeah, yeah, I take back what I said before about the two plates close to each other. Um, that's not as firm as two plates that are very far from each other, so you have a very firm connection. So this one shaft carries this idler here and the idler on the other side. Then when you pull that whole shaft, you can actually tension the track. And that's what we did. We welded these bars to the, um, yeah, they were attached to the shaft. And then we pulled on that to tension the entire track. And we're going to do better than, than that this time for the reason that uh, down there, pretty much like under the tractor, it's kind of hard to get to, not really accessible. So there's another way to do it. So let's discuss the tensioning. So what we want to do this time around, instead of the long elongated plates where the the shaft actually moves in there, that's a little harder to execute than actually moving the idler, The sorry, moving the actual drive sprocket, sliding that back and forth on the on the platform. To tension the track so how does that look like so let's discuss the tensioning um, so that's track connection let's do another slide so track tensioning so what we can do is borrow like for example from I'm gonna borrow this diagram right here so that's kind of since that's already good there so track tensioning we're gonna have our, that's how our tracks look from the side. So let's, let's see. Just get rid of that. Okay, there. Okay, so if you take a look at that, that would be like say your tracks you put on the tracks you have to put a at the end you connect the last two pins and you bond the tracks together you can't do that at full tension of the track so what you might start out with is something like this where the tracks here are relatively loose they're kind of dangling you know so you can put them on they're loose but you gotta t tension them at this point so the way we want to do it this time based on last year's learnings um, move the red part don't move the the purple parts move the red part because that lends itself it's like right above deck it's easy to access so let's do that and to tension it what we'll do is we'll pull the ball to this side here there so to tension the track so this looks like it's tensioned, whereas here it's it's floppy. It's like that. You know, we just put the track on. Because th remember, this is human scale. This is designed such that everything here, the rotors, every part, weighs no more than 200 pounds. In other words, one strong person or two people can lift that. So we're not designing the use of hoists into the maintenance aspect of the of the track so that's what it happens here the tracks get tensioned by uh, this um, so move the actual drive sprocket move the drive sprocket I mean with the motor with drive motor to the right Yeah, so on the left side you have loose, that's the loose configuration, but so you know to emphasize that, you know you can just to make it more visible here, 
you know, basically you put it on and then you move that the actual loose tight. That's the idea. Now how do you do it? So because that universal rotor up there sits on top of the frame, you can slide that across the frame. So so the universal rotor, the way it's attached, um, it looks kind of like that. It's it's like your universal rotor assembly, which you can represent by the square. Um, so you essentially slide that on top of slide that square assembly on top of the frame. You still need some tensioning bolts and so forth, but that's the design that we want to do. So that's conceptually what we have for the track tensioning. Uh, and once we have this, then we can move on to other aspects of the design. So, so at this point, uh, going back to slide six here, um, as far as what we need as parts for the library, so this is library parts. So we need the hydraulic wheel. Uh, sorry, hydraulic motor. That's a subunit of the modular wheel unit. It's just part of the modular wheel unit. The modular wheel unit itself. The attachment. Uh, the, when I say attachment, that's attachment to frame of the modular wheel unit, as well as just the motor only if we're using motor only without the modular wheel unit hull assembly and we talked about it last time we said that we use only the motor if we're much more constrained in space and we want to make a smaller machine then you don't want to use the entire modular wheel unit which is huge I mean it's pretty long um, you want to use just the motor to drive things so then we've got the frame, the base platform. Like you see in this picture, the base platform here was very simple. That's what the base platform looked like. And onto that was where everything was attached from the wheels to the power cube, everything else. Okay. Uh, so there's the cab, if you talk about a tractor. And then, of course, there's things like loader arms. Uh, and then the track detail, which is what we went through uh, this time around here. So that's the idea, and, and the concept here is once we've got uh, some, I mean, we'll talk about role allocation here, but for now, we don't have to do that. Let's go to the meeting proper. Now, Ahmed is working on this, so Ahmed, if you see this, we can start drawing up the individual parts, but this would, of course, lend itself to a design sprint or other thing. Now, the priority for for this weekend is, so now, yeah, and, and let's actually roll into the next meeting, so this kind of wraps up the the tractor meeting and uh, I'll, I'll stop the recording here right now so thank you but we'll continue with the meeting um, so I'm gonna